Ice surgery danger. What dangers are really exist? How it might affect your surgical outcomes and your vision quality after the surgery? And the most important, what are the most frightening factors do you have before visiting an eye doctor and surgeon? Hi there. My name is Alexey and you are at Eye Surgery Explained channel. I have decided to split this video into the two parts. The first part, which I'm shooting today, will explain you general eye surgery dangers which exist and relates to, I would say, majority of eye surgical procedures. And I will explain which type of surgeries do we have in general and how it might be related to your visual outcomes after the surgery, what to expect. And the second part, which I'm going to release in two weeks from now, will be based on your particular concerns, on your comments, which I ex encourage you to leave in the comments below to this video, explaining what are your what are your concerns, what questions do you have before your surgery, what are the most frightening factors, and if you were able to get a good explanation from your doctor, and if not, what happens and how can I help you in this matter. And of course, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel to see the next part, to see the second part of this video, please subscribe to my channel now and see you in the next video. Well, now let's talk about the main topic of this video. What surgical dangers exist? And to know what surgical dangers exist, we have to know, first of all, what types of surgeries exist in the ophthalmology. Generally, we can define the surgical procedures into two main groups. The first one is so-called medically necessary procedures. The idea of the surgeries is to either to be life-saving procedures, which, which are not the case for ophthalmology, of course, but uh, these procedures are absolutely medically necessary to keep a uh, patient's health in a good conditions or either to improve certain medical conditions or keep it from worsening uh, due to disease progression. And the second part is so-called elective procedures. Sometimes they are defined as not urgent procedures, and generally, it's related to the procedures which are not medically necessary. What does it mean? It means that that, uh, that type of surgical procedures will simply improve your life quality or vision quality or your life comfort, whatever. But you can live without that procedure uh, generally more or less okay. It's just a matter of personal comfort, personal look or whatever. And coming back to ophthalmology, I would say that we have two groups of surgical procedures. The first group is a group of procedures which will improve your visual outcomes. Other words, it relates to any type of procedure when you can expect significant visual improvement after the surgery. And the second group of procedures is a procedure which, unfortunately, by nature of the ophthalmology, by nature of our health, of our body and nature of, of the medical procedure, are not designed to give you significant improvement of your vision quality or even not designed to improve anything at all. I mean uh, not designed to improve something noticeable to the patient. But in majority of cases that type of procedures are absolutely important to keep your vision at the level as it is now to prevent worsening or even future blindness. And you know what? If we are talking about eye surgery, in majority of cases we do expect visual improvement. We expect something tangible, which we can get after the surgery. And even if it's really the case for cataract surgery, for refractive lens exchange, laser vision surgery, or all the type of elective procedures, I'm not talking about cataract because it's not really elective, but it comes to elective phase if we select so-called premium eyewalls, which I'm talking on my channel quite a lot. But if we're talking about glaucoma surgery, retinal surgery, macular surgery, vitro retinal surgery, in majority of cases, these procedures are designed to keep your vision at the level as it is now, and you shouldn't expect any miracles that after the surgery your vision will be improved. The main idea of that type of surgery is just to keep your vision and prevent blindness. Well, I hope I explained everything more or less clearly. But if something is unclear to you, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below and I promise you to uh, respond to the best of my knowledge. I came back to YouTube and dedicate all of my time to help you to see better. Well, now let's come uh, to the general dangers of the surgery, which are, um, let's say, general for all the type of procedures which I have mentioned to you. Of course, for some surgical procedures, something will be not relevant at all. For some surgical procedures, more or less everything will be applicable, but I will tell you about all, let's say, set of complications which are really exist. And do remember, I expect from you your concerns, your fears and your uh, expectations of any danger 
you are thinking about before the surgery to help me to create a part two of this video and to find out what type of surgical procedures are related with which type of danger and how often it happens and is it really a danger to be concerned about. Generally, I can identify 10 eye surgery dangers which could be described as follows. The first one is surgical infection or post-surgical infections. It's normal and basic surgical, let's say, risk and possible complication with any type of surgery of all the years, all the ages, signs we do have a surgery. I believe it's absolutely evident and honestly, the risk of this type of um, complication is very much dependent on country or where do you live, on your hospital quality and personal qualification, but generally, in uh, highly developed countries, the risk of having uh, infection during the eye surgery is so low, is so neglectable that I don't, I don't think that it really makes sense to talk about this. However, it still might happen in in every country in every surgical procedure. So it is risk number one. The risk number two, the risk of IOP increase. IOP is intraocular pressure, and it might be increased after the surgical surgeries, and in majority of cases, it's a temporal increase of uh, pressure and it's normally reduced after the surgical procedures. Uh, however, in some cases, it might, it might be quite dangerous for patients with glaucoma or with patients without glaucoma. But if uh, uh, IOP rises too high, it might be a bit um, dangerous for visual nerve head and for your vision, let's say, quality in a long term perspective. Same story, it's not often, but as I promised, we'll, tell, uh, we'll discuss all this uh, stuff in details in my next video. The third complication is retinal detachment. What is retinal detachment? We do have uh, retina, a photosensitive surface on our eyeball, inside of our eyeball, and it is attached to the eye structure. So any type, certain types of eye surgery might increase risk of retinal detachment. Why this might happening for whatever reason and uh, retinal detachment, it could be a separate um, condition which requires eye surgery and it could be happens, it could happen naturally without any surgery. And to attach retina to its place, we need another type of surgery, so-called vitro-retinal surgery in some cases, depending on retinal detachment stage. The fourth possible complication is uh, visual fluctuation. It could happen after cataract surgery, after LASIK, after or during the retinal detachment and many other conditions. It is something which might happen and also in majority of cases it has, uh, it has a temporal uh, nature. And as I have mentioned, cataract surgery and this complication also might be uh, related to the refractive lens exchange and laser vision correction. It is so-called uh, refractive surprises or uh, refractive misalignment or mis missing the refractive target. Or in other words, after the surgery, patient might be left with residual myopia, hyperopia, and or astigmatism. The next possible complication, which in some cases is also temporal, is a dry eye syndrome. It might happen after either cataract surgery, refractive lens change, and of course, laser vision correction of any type. So it is something which you might not feel, but it might affect your vision quality. Or if it is in clinical phase, uh, you as a patient might feel or either little discomfort or relatively high discomfort after the surgery. And in majority of cases, it might be temporary. However, the duration of this um, symptom might be different. The seventh complication, it could be a cataract formation. Yes, some surgical procedures might induce a cataract formation or as well as some medications or trauma or whatever. And since in majority of cases, cataract is just aging process, but some surgical procedures might induce this process. And after the first initial surgery of whatever type, you might have you might need a cataract surgery after to remove your cloudy lens and to put an artificial intraocular lens to restore your vision. And here is important to know that we have four major eye wall types which are a bit different in terms of near visual equity and possibilities to see without glasses uh, after the surgery. It's important to keep it in mind and discuss with your doctor if you are undergoing cataract surgery of any of any nature. I have a video explaining the different eye wall types on my channel so it will be a link here in and in the description below. And moving from the cataract, I think it might make sense to move to an, another complication, which is described as halos and glares. It is night vision symptoms after the cataract surgery with certain IOL types. And honestly, it might happen with any IOL, uh, but with some IOL types, it happens more often. With some IOL types, it happens less often. 
again i have a separate video about that on my channel so i will put uh, the, the link to this video to the to the description as well for you to understand what i'm talking about and the ninth complication could be related to cornea corneal haze any difficulties related to cornea because some surgical procedures are performed via cornea and we can touch the cornea and something might happen with the cornea even if we are if the surgery is not associated with the cornea and if it is happening with the cornea in some cases we'll need either some additional surgery or some therapeutic procedures uh, to restore the corneal structure and the last one which i would like to mention and maybe the most frightening uh, which many people think about but i'm not sure so you will tell me in the comments below it is a vision loss it is complete vision loss after the surgery it is something which happens not often extremely rare cases but of course in some surgical procedures especially if we're talking about the vitro retinal surgery about the posterior segment surgery which is way complicated it might happen i do hope that this video was not shocking was not frightening to you because it was not the aim of my video I just want to initiate a discussion with you to hear your voice, to understand what is, uh, what are your concerns, what are, what are your fears before going to the uh, to the eye surgeon, to help you to understand what to expect and how often something bad could happen to you. And generally, our modern eye surgical field is absolutely safe and extremely well developed nowadays. The cataract surgery, for instance, is the most widely performed surgical procedure worldwide and it has the lowest side effects rate. If you are talking about the laser vision surgery, it is also the, one of the safest surgical procedures worldwide. And honestly, in some cases, wearing contact lenses, which I do, for instance, might be more dangerous than doing a LASIK or any type of laser refractive surgery. So please help me to understand you better and see you in, in my next video about the topic in two weeks. And next week, I'm going to talk about IOL selection and specific of modern IOL types.